Good evening and welcome to the, I'd like to open up our Carver School Committee meeting for Monday, August 12th, 2013. Everyone's having a great summer. All right, can we please rise, we'll say the pleasure. Yeah, we'd like to open up our meeting this evening with any comments from the general public. Seeing none, we'll move on to comments from the AAPC. I see Don. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to all of you, too. Um, I just wanted to thank all of those teachers and the staff members and the secretaries and custodians and, the, you know, all that were involved with all the summer programs in Cava. Um, while some people were at the beach, these people were working very hard for the students in the town. And I also want to acknowledge that I know that there are a lot of staff members that did curriculum work, that took courses, and um, actually I had three come up to Williamstown for the summer conference from Sunday to Thursday with me last week. So your Carver teachers have been very, very busy, as well as your paraprofessionals and the rest of the staff. So I want to acknowledge that, and I have seen them out shopping. They've been watching those ads for those back to school sales, and you can always tell a teacher because they fought through everything to make sure they all look the same. <laughs> you know, because they don't want any problems. So you can see them trying to get every single color that's exactly the same. So I wanted to thank all of them and acknowledge them. And here we go again. So thank you. Thank you, Tom. That would like uh, comments from our student council. Yes, come on up. Thanks for coming out in the summer. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, um, so first I'm going to tell you about um, our summer events that happened. Um, so first we helped parents to uh, serve food at the Firefighter Clam Bake on June 23rd. Um, besides the community service aspect of that, um, we raised money by collecting all the cans and bottles um, throughout the entire day and we bring them to the Redemption Center as kind of a small tiny fundraiser for us. Um, we raised $75. Um, on that. We also helped set up and serve um, over 500 people at Carver Home Day on July 27th um, with the clam bake there. Um, all of our volunteers and workers um, made it a very successful clam bake that day, which was good. Um, and I think take the rest of it. All right, so Student Council also um, ran a fundraiser car wash down at the elementary school. Um, that was on August 3rd. It was successful, the day was kind of rainy, so it wasn't as many people as we would have liked, but we still were able to raise um, $250, which is good, um, don't mind that. And then um, some things coming up, it's just back to school day. Um, we're gonna try to decorate the school and um, make signs to welcome back and kind of have all the kids an easy back to day, uh, school day. Um, then Crusader Fest is actually gonna be early this year, um, in September instead of last year, I believe it was in November. Um, and we'll update that on other meetings. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank, thank you. We look forward to hearing what's to come in September. Thank you very much. With that, we will move on to the approval of the minutes from the June 10th, 2013 regular session. Do you hear I'd like to make a motion to uh, accept the minutes as written for the June 10th regular session. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? I, I will second with um, just a slight um, modification. The date on the front of the minutes is right. It says June 10th, 2013. The footer says June 10th, 2012. So we just make that slight correction. So noted. With the uh, adjusted amendment there, uh, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. With that, we'll move on to communications, Liz. Sure. You can see that we had um, another audit of our um, performance-based funding audit of our lunches, and we do qualify now for a, a additional um, monies because we did very well on the audit. So that's a result of that. And um, then you just have included in here your welcome my welcome back letter to all staff and we will begin with our traditional celebration breakfast at the um middle high school cafeteria on the 26th at 8 so if you 
are available and can come. You know, traditionally you give out the professional status certificates. I think you may have just signed them. I, I did. It, it is a great time. I will. Uh, I look forward to uh, meeting with the teachers again as they kick off their year and and the excitement that is in that room each year. It's it, it's a great time. So, yes. so we are, um, you know, very excited about welcoming everybody back, but wishing them just the, the nicest little break between now and then. However, we did have about 40 people at the Math Academy today, so we continue to work, 40 teachers. Um, and then last, there was a you know comment <laughs> on the new Common Core Standards. I saw. Um, bring it to your attention. Um, the standards do not require any reporting, which this article leads you to believe that it's the state information system for children and teachers that requires you to report, but the Common Core Standards don't require you to report anything. So it was a little bit erroneous on that fact, so I just want to bring that to your attention. And Massachusetts did not adopt the Common Core. They adopted the Massachusetts Standards of 2011, which are the Common Core plus more rigorous standards that were always there. So we did not wholesalely adopt them as other states did. So just, just FYI. <coughs> There's a question on the um, on the school lunch audit. Yeah. Part of our uh, vote at that last was that the prices would be set on that. Was that it was it said that it would be uh, left open? Would we vote to modify that that there would be a set price for lunches? We voted to increase lunch prices. Was there a number given on that though? Did we come up with a yes. figure on that? Mm -hmm. when we voted? Yeah. Okay. This was uh, this audit was in, in fact just to talk about it for a sec, just a quick a quick minute. Um, there was there are new federal standards that were obviously put into place. Federal standards, state standards, and if you met these, that the um, the, the federal reimbursement would increase by six cents per meal. It was a very difficult task to do, and many many of the school departments out there actually hired consultants uh, to do this for them. And our director was able to do this, and we did comply, and actually started receiving um, the additional six cents per meal during last school year. And we will get it for the whole year coming up this this school year. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think what you were remembering, we left a hole in the um, school policies, yeah. just saying subject to price or something like that. But we didn't know that. But it was in the school handbooks. Yes. Yeah. So um, the, uh, the, the next yes. Do my reports? Moving on. yes, moving on to reports. Um, this, you know, the calendar that you approved is is now um, part of the um, will be mailed out to every family in Carver and will also be given to the teachers and, and to you. So that has move right along. Parents don't panic, but school is coming. Mm -hmm. I put it in there in front of the clock. Okay. A couple weeks. In, uh, in November, there's a, uh, a teacher professional day yeah. on the 8th that's not grayed out. That is a, a non-school day, though, correct? Yes, it has a T day. The grays, um, you know, we might, it isn't gray, but it is, the, it is a T on it, which shows that it will be a teacher day only. Is these all were printed already? So I see that would be tough to change. Because I see people like me saying, oh, there's school that day. So is there any way we could just make We haven't proved it yet, have we? It's gone to the printer. I can call them in the morning. So. Yeah, she hasn't. She hadn't printed them yet. Right. Because I would complain. Yeah, I, I saw her on Friday <laughs> I did picking up something in my own that yeah. school, and she said, I'll get to it, Liz. I said, don't worry, I don't need it tomorrow. Sure. She hasn't printed it. All right. Mm -hmm. um, then under personnel, um, we have a, a retirement of Nancy Seaman, school secretary this month, Roberta Perry from Food Services. <laughs> Have resignations, Jody Olson, grade two teacher. Uh, Michelle Dan was coming back from maternity leave after two years, but her husband got a new job and she's unable to come back because she can't get anyone to babysit at 5 a.m. in the morning. So sadness, we don't get her back, but we got another teacher back who worked before for us, Stacy Nolan. 
<laughs> so we were sad, and we're still sad, but now we're glad to have Stacy back. <laughs> um, Anne Rizzuto, kindergarten parent, is going to work for the Girl Scouts with a much larger job, and we're happy for her. Sue Blass, kindergarten para. Nancy Magnuson is now working for the town as part of the town clerk's office. Um, they're all moving to, you know, much um, more responsible jobs, and we miss them, but they're moving up in their careers. Can I just add that I just happened to see a name that my daughter had in second grade last year, Mrs. Olson, and I was disappointed to see her name on the list, but I heard she's going on to bigger and better things, which is... Uh, well, in Jody's case, she lives in Dennis Sherman. She loved working in Carver. She worked here. She worked in a small school, private school on the Cape, and then she came back here. Yeah. But now she was offered a position in the Dennis Sherman Elementary School around the corner from our house. So, you know. Well, she made a great impact on my daughter. So, I, just on the record, how wonderful she was. And she was a I sent, obviously sent her They're lucky in Dennis Sherman. Yes. Well, and to that point, we do want to thank all these retirements and resignations for their service with us and the impact that they had on our students and we wish them luck as they move forward. So in new hires, there's just a lot because we've been very busy with retirements and people moving on. Um, Joe Bianco is hired in social studies. He finished the year for us last year um, and he is hired full time now. Travis is Joseph is also in social studies. Um, Morgan Dwyer in English, Keandra Markham in English, and Stacey Nolan in biology, Christian Parrish in uh, Paris in technology, Lauren Patriciak in math, Petra Sheely in science, and Melissa Strelke in English. So we have quite um, a list here. Um, new hires at the elementary school, uh, we have Kristen Andre speech and language, Lisa Cassani special ed, she was a para with us, now she's a teacher, she's a licensed teacher. Matthew Cartmel, moving here from New Hampshire. Matthew Cavanaugh, music, uh, Thomas Elder, PE, Bethany Frazier, grade five, Amanda Haynes, adjustment counselor. Anna Lane, grade two, she moved, that's the replacement for Ms. Olson. Uh, Liz Northcliffe, Speech and Language, Caitlin Owen, Grade 2, Christine Riley, Vision Specialist, Jen Thayer, Occupational Therapist, Elaine Bowman, Kindergarten Para, and Taylor Reed, Special <coughs> Education Para. Uh, the transfers, we have Lisa DeShaw is going to be a school secretary. Uh, Pauline Lopez is moving from this position, school secretary, to administrative assistant to replace Nancy when she retires at the end of this month. Kim Davis, Title I Math, Parent of Special Education. She was with math, now she's going to step. So, um, well, welcome to all these. Teachers have been on all these hiring committees and principals, and they've worked very, very hard. We have one position left to hire, and that's an elementary nurse. So, um, and they're hard at work on that. Um, and as far as the statement of interest goes, we have not heard anything. I was at the Mass School Superintendent's Conference in the middle of July, and I did speak with Mary Paquetti and her team and Jack McCarthy from MSBA, and they will be sending out first notifications probably in November. So they thought it would be more close to September, but they're doing so many emergency repairs after last winter that they haven't had time to consider the statement of interest yet because of the emergency repairs. And um, this was just mainly an announcement for you because it's over as of yesterday. Yes. The Music in the Park by the Carver Music Boosters, their last concert was yesterday. Um, <coughs> This is part that we bargained that we'll have administrative training for all evaluators, which will take place on um, August 19th, 20th, and 21st, with Kathy Spencer being our facilitator, and we've invited Donna to join us. Thank you. So we'll be very happy about that. Um, Ruby and I presented at the um, MESPA, Massachusetts Elementary School Principals Summer Conference um, on August 2nd out in Marlboro. We were very busy doing that. It was well attended. How was, did you get a lot of uh, feedback? Oh, yeah. People, they, they're amazed at what our literacy data looks like, but it's a long journey. Nine years is a long journey, so prepared them that it would not take happen overnight. So 
that we got good feedback. Um, and I would like permission just before I make my recommendations for things that we have to act on. Patrick has some really you know, good news about facilities update. I didn't put it in there. Yeah, absolutely. That was going to actually be something I was going to ask you. Yeah. Give us an update on, on some of the capital okay. stuff that we've been working on. We've got to uh, uh, ask Dave to put a little something together, and uh, which he did. So we got a pretty comprehensive uh, update coming here. So all the public school buildings, uh, summer cleaning will be completed by the start of the new school year. Every classroom is emptied out. Ceilings and walls are wiped down. Floors are stripped and new floor finishes applied. All necessary mechanical maintenance is completed over the summer. Installation of the new security doors is to begin on Wednesday of this week. This will take about one week to complete. All of the doors scheduled to be replaced. The vendor that's installing the um, uh, new electronic access control in the doors will be directly behind the door installer. They're, they're two, different, two different companies. Uh, and that will tie in the equipment. Should be operational for the start of school. The vendors are at their, busy, at their busiest at this time of year, and um, we're fortunate and hopefully to have this completed over the short summer break. Um, as far as the security upgrades go, at the, um, uh, at the Washburn um, elementary, elementary School, the main entrance doors are to be replaced, new interior containment doors are to be installed, four sets of exterior doors to be replaced, New visitor check-in office has been remodeled at the front building. So that has been completed. That. Building. All but the doors. Inside, right. Mm -hmm. But the inside, the <coughs> hole in the window. Yep. At the uh, at the front building, we have two sets of exterior doors to be replaced. At the uh, high school, middle school, the main office entrance doors will be replaced. The hardware and the existing exterior doors to be replaced. And I think hopefully you've all noticed that the new sign is operational also yeah. up at the uh, up at the high school. We've gotten some pretty good feedback on that too. So I think it's pretty. It looks pretty nice. Can I, since you mentioned that, can I ask a question? Is there any on the coming from Plymouth? Great, you can see it. But coming from Carver, it has brush. I don't know if that brush is on well, someone else's property. We, we've we've been talking about that. So that would be great. We, 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 we need we need to clear a little bit about that out of there. We're just deciding. <laughs> Whose, whose brush is it? Mm -hmm. And um, so yes, we, we do know that though, Barry, and we, we've Great. talked we've talked about it. Awesome. Uh, let's see, where were we? So um, we've also got um, as as part of our uh, one of our capital projects was to do a architectural engineering study up at the middle high school, and that's been um, <coughs> contracts been issued, and they're going to get to work on that, and they're going to get inside the buildings before the close of school, so that they can For assess. The that, I mean, before you yeah. know, right? <laughs> getting ahead of myself. Oh. Um, before the opening of school, so they can get a lot of the inside work uh, done and completed on that. Uh, Central Administration Building. As I hope you've noticed, when you when you drove up, it's a different color, and it's been painted. We've had some uh, some of the um, trim boards replaced and so forth. So again, that that was another capital project that we had. And um, it's as a test. Of, what color is it? Yep. As as of last week's, uh, that's been completed. So we've had uh, also as as we usually do. Uh, we have a summer painting program where we uh, where we hire uh, students to come in and, uh, and and help us do that. And they did a great job this year. Um, we had we had six weeks for them. They did a lot of painting, and that was John Roder, Ryan Feely, Quentin Deshaw, Kyle Yanulovich, and Craig Lazon. And the kids did a great job. A new stage curtain and balances are scheduled to arrive and are going to be installed within the next few weeks. So we'll take care of that um, uh, curtain presence um, at, at the high school. Um, a new area for the Boosters Club has been created off the high school lobby. This was a little time in coming, but we had to make sure it was the right thing. We had to get the design right. We had to get the permits right and so forth. So finally, finally that was all put together. So it's going to create space uh, for the Booster Club to sell food during the basketball and other events. It's going to be a, it's going to be a window that's going to be able to be, be open, give them a, a lot better venue to, to do this in. Okay. 
so it was done by adding a doorway and a serving window into an existing non-utilized closet. The big part was breaking through the wall. So the project was funded by the Booster Club themselves. So it, it had no cost to the, uh, to the school department. At the elementary school, we've got some new um, directional traffic flow markings. Parking spaces will be painted. The governor, John Locks, this week, several large trees have been removed uh, from, around the, uh, from the, around the building. And we'd like to express our appreciation to the DPW for their assistance in, in doing this. They helped us out a lot this year. They always help us out. We've got a great working relationship with them, and we'd like to thank them uh, for that. And just to give a little insight, we've had, uh, as, as far as the rest of our, um, our capital projects go, our, our vehicles, uh, we usually don't put those out until about the September time frame because we want to, and that would be for the, um, for the buses, the vans, we've got a handicapped bus coming too. We want to give the, um, the vendors have to have time for the uh, newer models to come out so they can price them. And then what we do is we order either a new model or a leftover of, uh, of similar specification. So we get the best of both worlds for that. We, we, um, we, we, can, have, we can have it either way. Sometimes if we get, a, we get a leftover, we can get it for a better price. So um, that's going to be going out shortly. We uh, had $100,000 uh, technology uh, capital, and um, we expended that uh, already. And um, this is where we got some iPads. Uh, the, and we've also got the, as we already mentioned, we had a $100,000 uh, security upgrade too. So uh, with that, the path to your point, it's not just the iPads, it's that also went to infrastructure. We, yeah, we absolutely. We, we went to so people aren't, uh, aren't understanding oh, that 100,000 yeah. bought just iPads. When you our, watch, our, our, basically it was a building that needed to be revamped right. from structure wise. There will be no blind spots in either the elementary schools or the high school. You will be able to walk in. It will be bring your own device one for any guest or student that comes in the school. Say welcome to Cover Public Schools, and um, but it will be separate from in, um, teachers. You're not they're not going to be on your network. Different networks. Um, and um, this is this is huge um, to be able to have district wide access, and it will get us a long way towards some semblance of one to one. Computing, so we had a, a very large project. Um, more than half of it's done, and we expect it to be fully operational in September. So great, it's one. Yeah, and I just wanted everybody to kind of understand mm -hmm. that it, it wasn't just that piece. No, it's a huge it. network, and I, and I think as those that watched when we went before the the, the board of selectmen, it really the we're so far behind when it comes to this technology piece of it and it's it's vital that we continue to invest in this piece as education continues to move forward in this uh, genre that um, it's important that our facilities are capable of handling what, what is to come so uh, that's great Damn. as far as the elementary goes should we get the opportunity to build a new building everything but the cabling can be moved to a new building all the access points and all of that because they're transferable of course you know how electronics are the time we built we'll be the building. next week. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, hopefully they'll last a little longer than that. But um, we will be, um, and of course we'll be developing new, with the teachers, new policies around what bringing your own device means. Um, many teachers are already using this with students that are lucky enough to have access in their room, but many couldn't because there were so many blind spots. So. Um, they now, there's amazing what we can do even with a, smart, a phone. So, um, it's a real, it's a really good thing for us. Okay, and thank you. All done, thank you. Thank you. Um, so the quiz is, you have to go out and decide and figure out what color the <laughs> building is. Um, it's not yellow anymore, I'll tell you that. Um, we do have requests to recycle books. The math department wants to recycle the following textbooks because they're not aligned to the current Massachusetts frameworks. Um, and they, as you can see, are more than 15 years old. So um, the first two and the last one is um, even more than that. So if um, make a motion to recycle the books. 
I make a motion to accept the math department's request and recycle the text on the line of the frame. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. 192 books. Yes. And we have a motion and a second. Any discussion regarding <coughs> recycling of books? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 They do like kids to have an opportunity to take them home if they want them, but otherwise they'll be recycled. So. Sounds good. That's it. And really, this is maybe the shortest school committee meeting on record, but <laughs> this is all the business we had. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Uh, with that, I, I want to open it up to our school committee, my school committee members to uh, if there's anything they would like to share. Uh, I just wanted to know if we remembered to ask the rec committee back to another meeting, they were going to come back and give us a little report on how they restructured and where they're at. Have we done that yet? Well, we will when they back around after okay. September. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's important that we continue to get them and keep them in the loop, like you said, and, and keep them on the agenda, whether it's quarterly or biannually or whatever, just to, to keep them, as well as uh, even our representatives on all calling it. All those pieces. We don't have any. We need. Yeah, well, that's the problem at this point. And, and I guess to our our, our, our community out there, we, we do want to extend the invitation. Uh, please get involved. I mean, it's important. Uh, this is your community. Uh, there are important seats. I know the board of selectmen does this as well. And uh, there's there's pieces of, of what goes on in our community that are unaddressed, uh, and, and we need your help. So. Um, with that. Um, they just sent a letter of interest to the school department. They're interested on being on the. Um, the school committee of Oak Collins. Sounds good, Bear. I just have one thing, and uh, earlier in the summer, it seems like a lifetime ago, I got a letter, and I think we all got a letter, from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rowe, David and Lisa Rowe, they're excellent members of the community, and uh, it was great to get a letter, a positive letter, and uh, they were re uh, praising Mr. Alessandri, who's an excellent high school teacher, and uh, they were saying how, to summarize, I don't have it, the letter with me at the moment, but to summarize, they were saying how great Mr. Alessandri is, and uh, how sorry they're, they are that their sons are leaving the school. I think they're going to a vocational school somewhere. But uh, they're not going to have the opportunity to have Mr. Alessandri as their teacher. And I, uh, I, I know firsthand what a great teacher he is because uh, my son had Mr. Alessandri as well. So I'm glad we have him. Uh, another, we have Mrs. Olson, Mrs. Perkins, Mrs. Alessandri. I can't name Mr. Alessandri. I can't name them all. But uh, whenever we get some mention, of uh, teachers, sure. I definitely want to <clears throat> reinforce the good news. Absolutely. Again, it's, it's another testament to the great staff that we have in the, here in this district, and, and we're looking forward to seeing uh, those that are going to be joining our team uh, here in, in August, not too. I have invited all of the new teachers to the September meeting. Great. So, we'll have to put out additional chairs. We'd love to see them all, absolutely. Please do. Well, with that, uh, I will accept the motion to adjourn. I move uh, that we adjourn. We have I'll a second motion. motion. And a second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Aye